Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you. Today's show is all about animals, so I came prepared with some jokes. Okay, hit me. What do you get when you cross a cat and a lemon? A sourpuss. Okay, okay. What do you get when you cross a chicken and a skunk? A foul smell. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What do you get when you cross a porcupine and a balloon? Oh! <laughs> do you get it? Do you get it? <laughs> You're not alone. You're in the zone. So hang up the phone. And get in the zone. Get in the zone. The Friday zone. You're in the zone, the Friday zone Everyone is invited to come, everyone is invited to come Everyone is invited to come, zone. everyone is invited to come Hi everybody and welcome to the Friday Zone. You know Taylor, today's show is all about animals and we are about to meet some right here in person. Well, I can't wait to see who it'll be. Find out right after this. Animals like you, it has a mother and a father. Maybe kids to feed and care for, maybe some grandparents too. And just like we like to do, it likes to hug and kiss and cuddle. Needs someone to help it sometimes, just like we need help some too. Animals are people too. Loves the sun and wind and water Loves the trees and sand and mountains Sometimes ice and icebergs too And just like we like to do It likes a cozy home to go to Wants to eat them when it's hungry And feels safe and comfy too Animals are people Alive and strong and healthy Wants to learn and grow and grow up And to feel important too And just like we like to do It likes to play and wander freely Go exploring and find new things Just how we like new things too Animals are people Animals are people Animals are people Here in the zone is our friend Dana. Dana, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So you have two of, um, I would say, your friends with you here. One in a big box, one in a little box. Is there is there a secret that we're going to get to kind of get into with these? Ooh, I don't know. You might get to see them today. <laughs> okay. Well, let's leave the big box aside for a minute. We'll start with this one. What, what do you have for us today? Well, how about I just pull it out? Okay. Right. Okay. I don't know. What so I have, I'm not nervous. Do you know what's in there? Well, she's wearing a glove. So I am. I'm wearing a glove. <laughs> Might be a little dangerous. And it comes on a leash. On a leash, it's probably a ferret. That's what I'm thinking. Fur or feathers? Feathers. I just heard Ooh. some flapping. <laughs> oh, oh my, my gosh! Goodness. Look at this little guy. You know what? This is the first time I've seen a live owl like this close to me. I would have to say so. <laughs> what kind of uh, what kind of owl is this? This is an eastern screech owl. Okay. It is an adult. Owl. Wow. It is full grown. Really? It will be a year old this month. Oh. Wow. So uh, it was actually struck by a semi truck uh, here in Indiana and oh, no it kidding. is not able to fly, which is why it's here with me. Okay. Oh. So you do you deal with uh, animals that need to be rehabilitated or injured animals or what do you do specifically? We do. If we find one that is rehabil needs rehabilitation, we oh. actually send it off to uh, one of our other properties, okay. Hardy Lake, and okay. they take care of the rehabilitation. Uh, we do have a facility where we're able to take in some animals, uh, but we only have three shelters. So we do have two birds right now. Okay, cool. So there's always a possibility of another. Yeah. So walk us through a day of, um, I guess, interacting with this animal. 
Well, it takes a lot of training at first, mm -hmm. whenever you first get a bird, but once you have it trained to sit on the glove and know uh -huh. that you're not a threat, yeah. uh, it's pretty well easy from there. We get in the car, we go on drives to... Do they like to drive? Not yeah. so much. They'd I would feel rather a little weird be... in a box, you know, you're yeah. not cooped up. Yeah, well this one is, is a lot better at the drive. The okay. other bird in the big box uh, would rather sit on the glove while I drive down the highway <laughs> if that were legal. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> you just drive it and you see someone with this bird just out there car. I would wait. I would yeah, wait. so they don't necessarily like being in the transport, yeah. but they have to be for their own safety reasons. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, talk about this owl a little bit. How does it, how does it get its name? It's an eastern screech owl, mm -hmm. so it gets its name from its call, which why they call it a screech, I'm not really sure, okay. but it sounds more like the whinny of a horse. Hmm, okay. That's interesting. Hmm. And, and nocturnal. Right. Nocturnal, absolutely. Uh, so right now he should be sleeping. He looks he's doing a, a lot of blinking. He's got the, he's got the lazy eyes. <laughs> like, I, I can totally relate with him right now. Um, where do you find these types of owls? Uh, here in Indiana. Really? They are all over the woods okay. uh, in Indiana and actually at Patoka Lake. Okay. Uh, they are our second most populated owl. Wow. Okay. So. Now we were able to get a chance to go to Patoka Lake and see some of you know, the activities that go along there. Um, what actually would you say the birds are looking to do at Patoka Lake? Are they looking there to live? Are they migrating? They live there year round. The only time they really have to leave is if uh, sources like their food become unavailable in the winter time. So mm -hmm. if the mice aren't coming out okay. uh, to scamper yeah, what around. What do they eat? What do they eat? These guys eat you, mostly mice, but they will eat flying mm -hmm. insects. How big too. of a mouse will, will this little guy eat? Well, as big of a mouse as it wants oh to eat. <laughs> That's so crazy. And so they hunt at night, uh, they, they do, do everything at night, nocturnal. Yeah. They do, um, yeah. Wow, that's cool. Um, so we're seeing video of a, of a bald eagle right now. Uh, how many bald eagles do you guys have? We've got seven active nests around the lake. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, there we go right there. There it is. Um, and now you guys actually gave some tips on that being able to find where these guys live around Potoka Lake. What are some key signs to look for? For the bald eagle? Mm -hmm. uh, one thing, especially this time of year before the trees get the really big leaves, uh -huh. is to actually have a boat go out on the lake and be able to just look up along the shoreline. It's the easiest time to see those nests right now and in the winter time is to find them. But you can also see the locations they're flying around right now because they're currently nesting, so cool. they're staying very Ooh. close to their nests. Yeah, there's okay. Emily looking for. Did yeah. you find any? Did I, you find? I did, you know. Oh, it, there you are, you're it looking. It was a long process. I had <laughs> yeah. to, you know, go through Searching some of the squirrel the woods, nests. You know, yeah. Maybe but I found did, some owls. I stumbled upon uh, one and it was it was awesome. <laughs> you could really see the difference and you have to have that keen eye. Yeah. It takes a while. But it was it was lots of fun. And um, you guys do a great service there. And you know, are there any takeaways that we could have for, you know, seeing any birds if they're injured? Where to call, what to do? You could call us at Patoka Lake or you can call uh, Hardy Lake and they mm -hmm. might come straight down and get it from you if it's close enough, which they're pretty close to here. Cool. So in Scottsburg, Indiana. Cool. Okay. Well, he's looking pretty sleepy right now. Let's put him back yes. in his box. I want to know what's in the big box, but Me too. we will find that out right after this.
and we're back with Dana from Patoka Lakes. Now, Dana, what is this gadget you've got here? I've got an identifier, which allows us to hear the calls of birds. So here's our eastern screech owl. <laughs> Whoa. What? <laughs> I feel like I'm in like, the Wizard of Oz right now. No, yeah, it's like earlier you said it. That sounds like a horse. It does. It does sound like a horse. And uh, screech, horse, I'm not really sure how they got the name. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't make sense. And they normally will, will call uh, with what, mating, uh, hunting? What, what, uh, what do they They call, call for? whenever they're mating and also whenever they're defending their territory. Oh, uh, okay, territorial. Uh, okay, so we want to see what's in this box. Can you play for us? Let's build the anticipation. Uh, can you play for us what is in this box? I can. Your identifier? Yes. Here we go. Okay. Ooh. All right. I don't. I think we're just gonna skip out on the box. Uh, we're gonna, okay. That's that's Sounds pretty like scary. Sounds like a big animal. Let's let's take a look. Okay. All right. Oh no. Let's do this, guys. You want this side? Yeah, I'll take this okay. side. Okay. 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 <laughs> I don't even know what's in here. This is a lot bigger of a box. I don't know what's in here. <laughs> it's a big rope too. So it's a bigger glove. It's a lot bigger of a glove. <laughs> Oh my Holy goodness. Holy. <laughs> this, that is is a hawk. A this is a red tailed hawk. Oh, and she's going to dirty your floor. Oh! <laughs> hey, we all she have accidents. She said hello. It's hello. okay. She's a little nervous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. hey, that happened to me my first day on the Friday Zone, too. So. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, this is a red tailed hawk. She is. She gets her name from this rusty red tail yeah. that she's got. Very wow. pretty. And she's look a lot at, larger of a bird. Yeah, look at those talons. Screech. I mean, those are. That'll, those will do some damage, huh? These will definitely do some damage. Uh, she can grip with a lot of pressure with those feet, and she eats the same mice that that screech does, but she'll eat a lot bigger animals, oh, wow. too. What kind of animals? Uh, like squirrels oh, and really? rabbits, wow. and every now and again fish, yeah. and other kinds of small mammals and reptiles as well, so and, even snakes. And she's not nocturnal. She's not nocturnal. So this she, is a daytime bird. So she's very active. Okay. She's giving me the, uh, the old stare down right now. <laughs> this is her happy face. This is? Oh, yes. great. This is, <laughs> this is my happy, happy face, to too. Yeah. So now, did she actually have an injury of sort to she actually did. to her? She was also hit by a car oh. uh, in Indiana. You yeah. can see how her uh, left wing is away from her body a little bit more than her right wing. Uh, that one is permanently injured, and she will never be able to fly and hasn't uh -huh. been able to since she was six months old. So what oh. are you? Uh, where can you find these birds, first of all? All over the state. This is okay. actually our most populated uh, hawk in the state. <laughs> She's looking and at so, it. what is uh, what does she do now that she can't fly? What is uh, how does she get her exercise, or what does she what does she do? Uh, for exercise, we get her out, uh, just like with the screech owl, and uh -huh. we kind of walk them around the yard. They have big shelters where they're able to move around different perches and ladders uh -huh. to kind of get some exercise as well. But they travel all around the state with us, even going to the state fair and other cool. state parks and properties to do programs. She is a beautiful awesome. bird, and I had so much fun getting to learn about these. And if you want to find out more about the activities available at the Patoka Reservoir, or to plan a trip to see Dana and her birds of prey in person, just go to in.gov and search Patoka. And we'll be back with more fun right after this Friday Zone flashback. Hey everybody, today we've stepped out of the zone and into the Indianapolis Zoo. And I'm here with Laura here at the Walrus Exhibit. Tell me a little bit about this uh, little guy that we have here <laughs> with us today. Well, this little guy isn't so little. His name is Brutus. Brutus can weigh in at, an, at anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 pounds, right? So he's wow. a pretty big boy. He is our only adult male walrus that we house at the Indianapolis Zoo. And he is about 23 years old right now. Now, how long do walruses typically live? They can live anywhere from 30s to 40s. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, I hear him eating. What, what, what is he eating? He eats two types of fish. He eats a smaller one. We call this capelin. He just sucks it right down. They have a powerful suction. He also has one called herring. And they eat everything completely whole. Oh, Brutus yummy. Target. Good. Yep. But clams is probably his favorite. Is clam your favorite? You like clams? Yes? Oh. And so what they do in the wild is they go under in the murky water and they get through the, under the, the dirt and find the clams. And then when they get those clams, they suck those clams right out of the shell. So you know when you have trouble getting those clams right out of the shell, 
To show his suction power off, we have this tube that we've designed. So we put the fish in there. And he sucks the fish right in. So it's a pretty powerful suction that these guys have. Oh my goodness. So take me through a daily routine with the walruses. What do, what do you and the trainers do? Uh, first thing them? in the morning, we come in, we break out about um, 300 to 500 pounds of fish to feed out through our department. Um, that goes to sea lion, dolphin, walrus, polar bear. After we make their diets, we gate them to what we call our holding area or our back area. And once we've got them back there, we clean their exhibit, make it all nice and clean for them, right? Good. You guys, <laughs> you guys, you're not very clean, are you? No. Good. They make a pretty big mess sometimes. So we clean their exhibit. As soon as we're done cleaning, they go back on the exhibit by 9 o'clock, and that's when the zoo opens for the guests. Um, these guys do have three feeds a day. We feed them at 9 o'clock where we do body checks, do some medical stuff with them. Um, we also feed them at around 12.30, and their last feed's about 2.45. Um, when they're not doing that, they usually have playtime. They have lots and lots of toys that we give them. Um, they also, around 3.30 to 4 o'clock, um, they usually tend to lay out in the sun. So you'll see them lounge and relax and hang oh. out together. Now, is there some tricks that you would mind showing Good. us? Sure. They do a variety of things, right? Good. <laughs> he can wave hello. Can you wave to everybody out there? Hello, Brutus. Good. And blow my kiss. Oh. Good job. Now, how long does it take to actually get them to learn these commands? Depends on the behavior, also depends on the walrus. These guys are very intelligent. So say if it's a wave, he could pick this up in one session. Um, say if it's something more difficult as in um, training him for like a blood layout to obtain blood, that could take a year to train. Just depends on the animal. Um, he's very good natured. He tends to pick up things very, very quickly. You train them not only to do, you know, Brutus. funny little gestures and things like that, but also for medical reasons. Yep, these guys are trained for anything that you guys pretty much go to the doctor for. These guys do x-rays, these guys do ultrasounds, so if we're roar or whatever, become pregnant, we could ultrasound the baby inside and see his heartbeat and everything. And they also are trained for blood. We get the blood either from their back flippers, since they don't have um, a lot of big arms there, or we get it from their spine. They have a place where we get spinal blood from these guys. Brutus has even had dental work done, right? And he was very good for the dentist. It wasn't very scary. It wasn't scary, was it? No. No, no it wasn't. <laughs> so anything that um, behavioral wise we can train these guys, we do, especially medically wise. I yep. see that they scoot across, and honestly, Laura, if I scooted across, I would probably get scraped up. They mm -hmm. don't. He doesn't look bad at all. Nope. If you look at the bottom of his um, flippers here, they looked almost like they're callous a little bit. They build up this hard skin. Oh. It enables them, you can wave, and enables them to keep um, from getting all the blisters or calluses on their, on their skin. Um, so yeah, they have a pretty rough texture. It's almost like a, a hard leather. That's okay. what they have on there. Now, when people come and interact, are they as friendly with new people as they are with you guys? Or do they have a special liking since they get to be with you guys? Um, they do. We like to think they like us a lot. These guys do love to be around people. Um, so interacting with new people is a lot of fun with them. Um, Nereus right now, because he is a little bit younger, um, doesn't quite get the concept of when we go meet people, um, we're going to go away and it's OK. He kind of wants the people to stay. He gets oh. a little upset when the people leave. So we're still working him on him being like, here's some new people. When you got to do some fun stuff, now they're going to leave and it's OK. Oh. You'll get to do it again. So he's still learning that, whereas Brutus and Aurora understand people will come back and interact again with them. Oh. Now, if I were to feed him a fish, would he eat it from my hand? He would. If you take I definitely want to try. <laughs> <laughs> All you do is you take this capelin, stick it right through the gate, and he'll just suck the it right gate. through. Okay. Yep. Oh! <laughs> I've never done this in my life. Here you go, man. Oh! They also are pretty good at kissing, too. So if you put your hand up there, he'll go snoop. He'll give you a... And Did you, you can feel how that suction power is. It's so soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very soft lips. <laughs> All right, well, Laura, thank you so much for giving us some insight on the walruses here at the Indianapolis Zoo. Good. Welcome back, everyone. We've got a big crowd in the zone here today, Taylor. We sure do, Am. How's it going, everybody? Doing good. Woo! Good. All right. So, what better craft for our hands-on zone than making a scarf? Uh, like this one? I made it myself. Ooh, and what is that, Emily? Can you guess? It's a cat, exactly. Very nice. I happen to have made a monkey. Ooh. Huh? You guys like that? It needs a banana. It does. I had, to, <laughs> I had to cut the arms off of it so it looked more like a scarf. Then one of our crew members, Lisa, made Ooh. Big Bird. Pretty cool, huh? You guys want to make one? It's yeah. pretty easy. So this is all you need. You need a big piece of felt, long about ah, three to six feet in length. 
Need some scissors, hot glue gun, glue. You can use some markers if you want to draw uh, the different shapes to cut them out. And of course, we've got our lovely googly eyes. So, let's get to work. What do you guys want to make? Mm, a wolf. A wolf? All right. Gray or blue? Gray. Gray. What do you want to make? <clears throat> a dolphin. Cool. I like that. Okay. All right, Emily, what's everyone else making? A bunny. Well, we're first starting off by uh, making a bunny. So, I think we're going to cut some super floppy ears out. I think I'm going to make a shark. Money. Sharks are scary. So the first thing you want to do is you, you can either, uh, you can take a, a marker and you can sketch out what you want to cut out or you can just cut out the shape you want. Okay, so, I'm gonna, so I'm going to sketch mine real quick. Um. Ooh. I think you're right about sketching, Taylor. I think that's a really good idea. Getting a little thin there. Getting some floppy ears. And the big right, thing, so we are making scars, ears. you know, so like you want to make okay. sure it's skinny in the middle because like with my monkey, I did have arms on him, but you still want it to wrap around your neck so you can, uh, you know, still wear it. Does it exactly. look good? You like I'm going to come over here yeah. and see what you guys are making. Do you guys have any ideas of what you're going to start with with your scarf? Do you want to cut yours out penguin. first or do you want to A it? penguin? Well, you have what black you, and white going on. That looks good. What about you guys? You need some scissors? Okay. I'm going to come right behind you. What are you making? And what about you? I'm not really sure. You're not sure what color do you have? You have like a, a creamy white. A bunny would be interesting. Maybe a polar bear. Oh. That'd be interesting. Looks like you have a bunny. Is that what you're going for? Yeah. We gotta lift this up and show them. Look at the belly in the middle. It's good. And you can just cut around the outside, right? And the right? cool part about that is awesome. that with your scrap pieces, you can cut those out and you can glue those on to your mm -hmm. scarf and add extra little things to it. Exactly, you're right. Now, I like the combination of your colors. What are you making? A elephant. An elephant? That is awesome. The red and the blue look yeah. great. Try and, uh, Last ones, what are you guys making? Try and make a oh, wall. You know um, a flower, I guess. You know a flower, I, okay, that's pretty. What are you thinking about? Mm. Try and maybe like a yeah, flip it over. Bear, a bear. Yeah. Okay. Well, our scarves are coming along here, but it's going to take a few minutes before we finish up. That's right. We'll see you right after this. Today's inventoon is the piggy bank. Ever since the invention of money thousands of years ago, there's been a problem. Where do you keep it? Especially if no one's invented pockets yet. Someone, we don't know who, got the idea to keep their money at home in a clay pot. In England in the 1400s, people were still putting money in pots. The clay they used to make the pots was known as pig. Because of this, the pots were called pig banks. At some point, someone realized that pig the clay sounded like pig the animal and decided to make the pig bank into the piggy bank. Ever since then, we've been putting our change inside the little piggies. Thankfully, most people get the point. We have got some great looking scarves here. Let's see. Jacob, hold up yours. Let's show them what you got. What'd you make? I made Perry the Platypus. Oh, awesome. <gasps> Try it on. See what it looks. That looks great. Pretty good. Lindsay, what do you got? Um, oh, what'd you make? Dolphin. Cool. You wanna try it on? Yeah. See how it works. Very fancy and warm. Here's my uh, here's my shark. <laughs> yeah? Emily, That's let's check awesome. some out. Yeah, let's start by this back table. We have some really good looking ones. You wanted to hold yours up first? Tell me. How it came out? What is that? A bunny rabbit. And the tummy is my favorite. All right, let's see yours. Yours looks like it's out of a book. What is its name or what is it? It's an elephant. Oh. Look at that nose. Isn't I like that, that awesome? That's awesome. All right, how is yours going? Can you lift it up and show us what you've got so far? Ooh, it's a flower. Let me come up here really quick. Can you tell me? Yeah. A human. This is a yeah. human. A What's human, its name? A What's, is it a boy? What's his name? Oh, we're Ooh, did you do a cat? What's his name? Mr. Whiskers. <laughs> That's so awesome. Ooh, lift yours up. Let me see. What is that? A penguin. Obviously. Oh, cool. Isn't that cool? Put it on. Let's see it. 
He's got a big belly too. Look at that, warm. Can you show us your robot? Did you choose the colors for a reason? No. I guess robots are animals Just to too. keep warm. Robot Absolutely. Animals. All right, let's That's come awesome. here. Lift yours up really quick. What is that? It's a thing. Uh, I just mixed a whole bunch of animals together <laughs> to make one. Cool, what kind of animals did you mix? Was like uh, a, did you make the chicken? chicken yeah. Um, an alligator and I don't really know. That's else. awesome. <laughs> That's really neat. Make your neat. own animal. I like that a lot. Yeah. Well, we've got some the girls up here finishing up theirs. I know we have a kangaroo. We have a bunny. And what did you make? A kitty. She made a kitty too. Well, you guys, thanks so much for coming in. We hope you had fun here in the Friday Zone. Yeah, thanks guys. And everyone at home, reminder, check out our website, fridayzone.org, where you can watch this episode, other episodes, and see behind the scenes photos of our craft making. But for now, remember to live, learn, and play the Friday Zone way. See you here next week. Bye-bye. All right. Let's see Show us what you got. Who is that or what is that? An alien. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you.